So today I was going to make the aniline from destructive distillation of the paraminobenzoic acid that I purchased recently, and I thought that I got at least a pound or four, 500 grams, but it turns out I only got 250 grams, and I managed to, I don't know if this was them or me, but there's curcumin all over this part. Also, this flask is going to be way too big. I mean, it's just going to have a lot of dead space, and that's not going to help, I don't think. I mean, maybe I should leave it, but I'm going to swap it out for a 500 milliliter flask. Alright, I went ahead and swapped it out for one of the 500 milliliter Pyrex flasks, so... We're gonna be gentle with it today, hopefully. 500 milliliters is just about the smallest I can heat in this mantle. This is a two liter Vivor mantle. It's very affordable. It can reach about 400 Celsius, but you can see the stirring is slightly offset because my normal choice of clamp doesn't reach all the way. And I know what the compromise is, but it's also about the height. So where I grab the neck, 500 milliliters is still comfortable here, but 250 it kind of has to hover a bit because of the height of the mantle for a 2 liter mantle. I got a glass stirring rod. These are really handy but very easy to snap so you should never use too much pressure. The idea was just to pack this stuff down and then give it time to settle so I'm not testing myself and it seems to have worked well. We're not dealing with a whole lot of powder here. It looks like it's going to take up the entire volume of this and some, but I've heard it packs down really easily. So let's quickly clean up the mantle. It's starting to shrink. I had to swap out the short path condenser for a regular short path setup because I keep forgetting that there's a crack right here and or like a chip missing from it. Right around here there's a chip missing. I don't know how it happened but thankfully it was $31 so I don't care. I've been heating this for a little over an hour now and it's just barely starting to melt. I was told that this has a melting point of 187, but I actually found that even after heating up to about 200 for over an hour, it still didn't melt until I turned it all the way up to about 220 to 250, and once it hit 250, I guess the heat finally transferred in enough, but the decarboxylation is just starting to happen. You can see the CO2 being released. And thankfully it's uh, shrinking enough that I can kind of shake it and tap at it. And it'll actually fall down and continue to melt. In its molten state, paraminobenzoic acid has a density of about 1.374 grams per milliliter, so this should have a final volume of about 180 milliliters once it's all melted down. So because there's still a huge solid cube in the middle, it's taking up extra space. It's very, very fluffy in its solid form. But if we direct our attention to the still head, 
Starting to see some smoking. Also see little bits of liquid forming. I'm going to seal this up like a burrito. Now, something I always like to demonstrate whenever I don't have a bubbler trap set up is how much gas decarboxylations generate. It's not enough for me to feel it blowing, but watch this. And you can even see some of the smoke build up after I release it. But it's not good to pressurize our system because these cat clips are barely holding on. But that just goes to show um, I'm not bothering to put on a bubbler trap because I already know how much CO2 is going to be producing. It's a lot. Let's take a look down here. Liquid has turned almost black. Probably looks black on camera, but it's not quite there yet. So it distilled normally for about 45 minutes and then I had to, like the temperature dropped from around 165 to 135 and I wasn't collecting distillate so I had to insulate it with some aluminum foil. And I had to turn the mantle up all the way to 280 to reestablish distillate because there was still a good amount in there but let's see if I can, there we go. We're down to about 50 milliliters of volume. A good amount of that's gonna be tar, but. It looks like we've collected about as much as we can, but the yield is definitely around 80% right now. And I wanna see how much of that I can squeeze out by maintaining a higher temperature, so. The mantle will equalize with the thermocouple, so I'm going to get it back up to like 250 to 280. See if I can get the a little bit more out of this. Because if it's too impure and I'm just driving over impurities, I should be able to remove them with the potassium hydroxide. So there really shouldn't be anything other than aniline in here. Okay, now it's time to clean up. I've let everything cool, as you can see by the mantle temperature. It's around 50 degrees, so it's just a bit warm. Uh, I need to clean up the short path because a little bit started to vaporize in there and it turned kind of yellow after sitting in the air. Aniline oxidizes very rapidly. Part of the reason that we didn't get a lot of oxidation despite using simple distillation is because we had an atmosphere of carbon dioxide constantly flushing through. And that's also part of why the boiling temperature never really got above 140, even though that's 45 degrees below aniline's temperature. We have a lot of crust down there. When I retrieved the potassium hydroxide, this used to be two pounds, but it's down to like a tenth. And I have a little Pyrex funnel that I snapped the end off, but that'll actually help us in this case. So there's the yield, max yield would be 133.9 grams, I believe. As you can see, what I mean by rainbow water, it feels like water, but it's got an oily quality to it. I really need to buy some of those argon cans. If I had some argon, that would be perfect to purge the atmosphere of this with, but we'll be redistilling again, so 
the loss will be minimal. I'm going to go ahead and put the potassium hydroxide in with the same funnel anyway. Too hard because I need to swap the cap. It already had a bit of a yellow color that I noticed upon pouring. I'm not sure if that was because of oxygen contact or what. It is slightly off white. And here you can see what I mean by that yellow tar. I shouldn't have pushed it so hard, but the lack of stirring also didn't help. But I figured that I might be able to get this out pretty easily. Yep. All right, now I'm going to rinse with some sulfuric acid, and that should be good enough. Then I can go wash it. All right, I've been cleaning for about an hour now. I've got it down to two little specks, one right here, one right there. And then there's a little bit of a brown smear on the outside right here. But it doesn't really show up on camera. Anyway, I'm probably going to have to soak this in concentrated sulfuric acid instead of shake with dilute and then wash with soap. This might just have to sit in a base bath for half a week. We'll see. It'll be fine for certain reactions. Like, I'm, I was thinking about distilling sulfuric acid anyway. I could do it from that flask. It's a little small, though. Anyway. This is the aniline after about an hour of sitting over hydroxide. It's definitely turning a bit of a darker yellow. The hydroxide is more of a powder, but... I can't smell it through this cap anyway, so it should be okay for now. It looks like this is actually quite dry already. That's what I mean, there's no visible water. I guess I'll have to leave that overnight. 